Hello, my name is Mike Mahan with the SMA Solar Academy, and in this tech tip, we will cover the configuration of export limitation. Setting up export limitation is very straightforward using SMA inverters, an SMA data manager, and an approved energy meter with appropriate current transformers or CTs. The concept documented in this video is applicable to PV plants of any size. The size of the plant will determine which inverters are used, which version of the data manager is used, and the capacity and number of CTs needed. Note that approved energy meters are available for Modbus TCP and RTU communications to the data manager. Before we begin, let's define a few terms. For this video, the term export limitation means a setup with an SMA data manager M, full or light version, that utilizes readings from an approved energy meter to control the active power output of SMA inverters. The objective is to limit the net amount of active power being exported to the utility. Often this limit is set at zero watts, which is termed zero export or net zero export, but the limit can also be set to a positive value or even a negative value to ensure there is always some active power being drawn from the grid. One technical point to clarify is exactly what zero export means for this system. An SMA inverter will output balanced current on its output AC line conductors. If the load demand is not balanced across those lines, zero export will yield net zero power flowing to the grid. However, at the point of interconnection, one line will be importing power from the utility, and one line will be exporting power to the utility. It is the responsibility of the system operator to ensure that all utility requirements are satisfied under all operating conditions. In this video, we will demonstrate the setup for zero export in a residential U.S. household with a 240 volt AC split phase 60 hertz utility service. The core components are a Sunny Boy 3.8 US-41 PV inverter, SMA Data Manager M Lite, and Elcor Watson Mark II Modbus TCP meter. Before setting export limitation parameters, all of the equipment must be correctly installed and configured. For the communications connections, SMA recommends wired Ethernet connections from the inverter to the same switch or router that the data manager and Elcor meter connect to. Of particular importance is the correct installation of the energy meter CTs. Incorrect orientation of the CTs or reversal of the leads on the meter terminals can reverse the sign of power flow. For correct power measurement, verify that the voltage reference for phase A is connected to the same phase that is measured by the CT wired to the phase A current terminals. Once the meter is correctly wired, it can be powered on. SMA recommends setting the energy meter to use a static IP address. For the Elcor meter E3 model, the IP address assigned by default can be found using the Windows-based Elcor utility called finder.exe. The utility can also be used to assign a static IP address to the meter. This IP address will be needed later, so document it. The turns ratio for the CTs being used must be set. For the MCTA CTs used in this video, the turns ratio is 2500 to 1 for both. On the front of the Elcor meter, press the right arrow, use the down arrow to select configuration, and then the right arrow to enter the configuration menu. Press the down arrow and then the right arrow to open the current transformer menu. For identical CTs, press the down arrow, then the right arrow to set the turns ratio. The digit with the line beneath it can be changed by pressing the up or down arrow. Move to the left by pressing the left arrow. When done, press the left arrow until CT turns is selected, then three more times to return to the home screen. Now the energy meter is fully commissioned and ready to be configured for use by the data manager. In this example, we have commissioned the data manager M light and the associated Sunny Boy inverter with it already. So we will demonstrate adding the meter to a commissioned data manager. The meter can also be associated with the data manager during that device's original commissioning. The energy meter is linked to the data manager through the user interface of the data manager. We will demonstrate accessing the user interface on a computer with a wired LAN connection using the IP address assigned to the data manager. Please consult the data manager M Lite operating manual, section seven, for other options to access the user interface. The login credentials for the user interface are those set during the original commissioning of the data manager. Once logged in, select the configuration or wheel icon from the list on the left and select device administration from the list that appears. In the pop-up window that appears, select the plus sign at the top right. Verify the radio button next to Modbus devices is selected and then click continue. 
Select Ethernet from the Interface drop-down menu. Select Elkwar Watson Mark II from the Modbus Profile pull-down menu. Enter the correct IP address for the meter in the IP address window. If needed, change the Modbus port from the default 502 value. Leave the unit ID as 1. You may change the name if desired. Select Continue when done. Select the radio button next to the meter and adjust the device name if desired. The value entered in this field will appear in the plant tree. Select Save when done. After the meter shows up in the list in the device administration window, click the plant dashboard icon. Verify that the meter appears in the status list with a green check mark next to it. Select the configuration icon from the menu on the left and select meter configuration from the menu. On the screen that appears, select the meter in the device column for both purchased electricity and grid feed-in. Select Grid Reference Counter in the Channel column for Purchased Electricity. Select Grid Feed-In Counter in the Channel column for Grid Feed-In. Click Save when done. It is recommended to also verify that all SMA inverters are configured to allow active power control via system communication. Select the Home icon in the top left, then choose the Select Device item in the top ribbon to see all devices in the plant. Once the desired inverter is chosen, select the Configuration icon and parameters from the list that appears. Typing operating mode in the filter window will reduce the parameters listed dramatically. Verify that the operating mode of active power setting parameter has the external setting value selected. Repeat this step for all inverters participating in the export limitation. Now we are ready to configure the settings for the specific export limitation scheme. Select the home icon at top left in the Data Manager M Lite user interface. From the Configuration menu, select Grid Management Service. On the window that appears, select Configuration and Activation across from Active Power. In Step 1, set values for Timeout and verify the total system inverter AC power. Select Continue when done. In Step 2, select Close Loop Control and Manual Control, then select Continue. In Step 3, set the set point for export. Zero is correct for zero export. A positive percentage of total AC power should be selected for export limitation. A negative number can be set if net power should always be drawn from the grid. Select Continue when done. In Step 4, click the slider next to Active and set the settling time and active power gradient. Often 1 second and 100% are appropriate values. This allows for up to 100% of the total power to be limited in 1 second if the load demand drops dramatically. It is the responsibility of the system operator to correctly set these values. In step five, if needed, select the slider next to external active power setting two, fallback behavior. Select values for timeout and fallback active power limit. Click save when done. At this point, all needed configuration for net zero export has been done. It is easiest to verify the correct operation if a large load can be shut off so that the system begins to backfeed. Here we see the Sunny Boy production, and then on the Elcor meter screen, the net consumption from the grid. Then a heater is turned off to drop the load demand significantly. The swing to grid export is quickly controlled to approximately zero watts as desired. Please note that as explained before, the net zero export will usually result in one line drawing power from the grid while the other exports power to the grid. This can be seen directly on the instantaneous value screen of the Elkhorn meter. The home screen shows the drop in Sunny Boy production required to achieve net zero export. This system is operating properly for the goal of net zero export. We hope you have enjoyed learning about the implementing of the export limitation. If you would like to learn more about SMA products, please visit our website at sma-america.com. My name is Mike Mahan from the Solar Academy. Thanks for joining us.